Hey everyone, and welcome to topic seven in our database design and management class. In this topic, which is also the final topic in our class, we're going to learn about database indexes. In this first video, part one of topic seven, I'm going to provide an introduction to database indexes. Let's get started. After decades of, of experience using, working with databases, I can tell you that knowing about indexes is one of the most useful things that someone who works with databases can know in terms of being able to improve the performance of queries that they run in the database. That is how quickly the database can answer your questions, where questions of course are submitted to the database in the form of we'll select queries. So we saw during topic number five, that uh, one of the ways that we can improve query performance is through denormalization. And that is absolutely true. It can make yield some marked improvements in performance by doing things like avoiding joins, pre-computing values so that they don't need to be computed at runtime, et cetera. And so those can yield some really good performance gains, but the single most powerful tool for achieving good query performance in a database environment is indexes. And it's for this reason that I uh, teach them as the last topic in this class. All right. So again, just to emphasize this, many uh, DBAs consider indexes to be the single most critical tool in their toolbox for improving database performance. And I would wholeheartedly agree with that statement. I think you'll find that indexes are really extraordinary in, in what they can do. To put some of this in perspective for you, like I, sometimes in my research, I have to work with tables that contain billions of rows of data. And uh, with properly implemented indexes, I can find anything that I want in that table of billions of values in just a split second, less than one second. It's almost instantaneous, but without indexes, it would take a long, long time as the database would have no choice except to look through every single row and see if it was uh, what I was asking it to find. Okay. So uh, these indexes are, are really, really useful and genuinely can vastly, vastly improve query performance. And this of course is critically important because, Hey, we live in the era of big data and the more and more data that we have, uh, the harder and harder it is to find what we need. So in that case, if we have tools like indexes, we should use them to make that task of finding what we need fast and efficient rather than slow and cumbersome. So what is an index then? Well, an index is a data structure that is concluded in addition to a table. So it's built on some table in the database. Okay. And in this sense, you can think of indexes as overhead data, it's extra data, right? Whenever we have an index, it's going to increase the amount of storage space required to store our table and its associated data. But there's a trade-off in the sense that, yeah, we need to use a little more storage space to have the index, but in exchange for that, we get just extraordinary improvements in query performance. So I think an excellent analogy for database indexes is to think of the index at the back of a textbook. So we're all familiar with these, but it's a couple of extra pages at the end of the book, right? So just as with databases, having an index at the back of a textbook requires a little more space than otherwise would be needed, right? So I, to have an index at the back of the textbook, I have to have a couple of additional pages. It's the same thing with a database. To have an index for a database, I have to have a little more storage space, right? But with that index there, you can find what you want much more quickly. So if you think about, I don't know, think of like a, a large chemistry textbook. Now I'm sure you all have nightmares about some of these classes you've taken in your past where you get like some 800 page long textbook you know, and you have to use that to study some topic. So imagine that I give you this very large 800 page chemistry textbook and I ask you to find me information about something in there, right? So maybe I ask you to find me information about, I don't know, some kind of 
chemical process or element, let's say that I, I want you to find me information about hydrogen. Now, if I want you to find me information about hydrogen in this 800 page long chemistry textbook, and you have an index at the back, you can find that information quite quickly, right? Because you know, you're smart enough to just understand how an index works, right? It's alphabetized by topic and it'll show you the page number that something is on. So you can, the, the rules of how to organize things alphabetically. So if you're looking for hydrogen, you just flip to the H's and find hydrogen and it'll tell you, look on page, whatever, 718. And then you can go to page 718 and there you found the information that I asked for. So that's very quick and efficient. Now, imagine what life is like if you have that same task. Here's a big textbook, find information about hydrogen, but there is no index available. What strategy do you use? Well, you really don't have much of a choice except to start flipping through pages and to see like, is this page about hydrogen? Nope. What about this one? Nope. What about that one? So you just go and you search and search and search. And if you search long enough, you will eventually find the information about hydrogen that I asked for. But you can imagine that on average, it will take a much, much, much longer time. So as you can see, indexes in a textbook allow you, uh, they, they, they serve as a data structure that allows you to locate your desired information quickly. And uh, the cost of that is we have to have a few extra pages of the textbook. Similarly, an index in a database table allows us to find what we want in the table very, very quickly, but it comes at the cost of requiring a little extra storage space. So just like the index at the back of a textbook, when we have these indexes in our database tables and they're designed properly, they can vastly improve the speed with which SQL queries can be answered. Because if you think about it, when you're submitting a SQL query, in order for the database to answer that, it needs to find the relevant information, right? So if it's just show me all of the employees that I hired this year, well, okay. So it has to be able to find those employees in your employee table based on their date of hire, right? And if you have an index that allows you to quickly locate employees by the date when they were hired, then you will be able to complete that task very, very quickly. However, if you don't, you just have to look through every employee record and figure out if that employee was hired on within the date range that I, that I want. If so, then you can return them as part of the results. So I think that just drawing this parallel between indexes in a database and the index at the back of a textbook, you can hopefully start to conceptually understand already why these are useful.